now that we have done product definition, uh, uh, you know, technical specifications, uh, we have done system architecture. So let's get into schematic design. Okay. So what you do is you connect the uh, components to form a working circuit. So what you did in your modeling, in your modeling in the previous stage and in system architecture, you basically uh, put different blocks, right? You drew a, you know, you drew a box, you drew a rectangle, you drew a triangle or whatever. And then you said, okay, this is this component. This is this component and all that. Now you have to go to actually building a working circuit from that architecture. So this stage is schematics. So in, in, in the schematic design, what you do is you take actual components and you form a working circuit at this stage, you don't do it on a uh, pen and paper. Right, because what happens is nowadays the systems are so complex, you cannot, you can no longer do that on pen and paper. Previously, they used to do that. So now you have a lot of software tools where you pick an actual component and you actually draw a working circuit. But before that, there are a few things that you need to do. First, you have to make a list of components that you need for the circuit. Okay, so we know that okay, this is my system architecture. I need to know okay, what are the different components that are required to build this system. So you list down the components. We call it as preliminary bomb. Bomb is bill of materials. So you make a list of components and you put it in a table like this. So I'll put an item number. Then you say, this is the component type. This is the description. This is the quantity. This is the manufacturer. Let's say I want a component, which is a hundred ohms or one kilo ohm resistor. So I'll write the description here. So this is a resistor with the uh, one kilo ohms component type is resistor. Description is one kilo ohm resistor. I want hundred such quantity because my design requires hundred such quantity. And then I'll go to some manufacturer, let's say Vishay or some company, right? Which gives the, uh, these resistors. So you make a list of those components. You put the quantity, you put the description. So this will help you in creating your schematics. Now, while you are doing this, you want to continuously keep checking the specifications. You want to ensure that you meet the specification eventually because schematic design is an actual circuit that you're building. So once you pick the components, what component you pick matters very much, whether it meets the specifications or not. So that you have to continuously keep monitoring that. Okay. And be careful about the size, cost, availability, and quantity aspects. So since you're building a hardware, you need to know from the product definition or from the technical specifications, what should be the size of the product. And your business team will tell you, okay, what should be the cost of the product? So you can always pick components, right? So there are components which come with different values, uh, sorry, with different price points. So you need to be aware of that. Okay, if I pick this and if I take 100 quantity of that, probably it will exceed my quant uh, you know, final product cost. So you need to be aware of the cost aspect. You need to see how much of those devices are available. Are they available, readily available in the quantity that I want? Let's say if I want to build 1 million phones, like 10 lakh phones, right? And I want, let's say one crore or 10 crore of those uh, resistors, are they available? So we should be aware of those aspects. So finally, once you prepare all these lists, then you pick a software tool to create your schematics. So I'll, I'll tell you some uh, tools that can be used uh, in the, in the future slides. So if you look at this picture, so this is an example of a simple uh, project schematic. So this is a Bluetooth hardware design. So I, I picked this uh, picture from the Texas Instruments website. So if you see here, uh, they, are, they are showing, okay, how different components are uh, you know, connected. So this is a real system. So you can see a lot of ICs are there. And then there are some resistors here, right? That are being connected. There, are, there is an inductor. So then there is an antenna. So you can see this is how a real uh, design will look like. Okay, this is a schematic. This is an actual circuit. So this should work. Electrically, this should work. That's how you should be designing it. This is no longer in a block diagram stage is an actual circuit. Okay, let me take uh, two questions. Okay, there's a question asked, someone is asking, Sabrish is asking, even if the simulations are perfect and architecture is finalized after an iterative process, the actual hardware will have differences, right? Yes, that is true. So having done simulations and modeling doesn't mean that the hardware will work exactly as you saw in the simulation. Yeah, that is true. Simulation will always give you a good idea of, you know, what you're, uh, what you have, uh, you know, what you can expect, right? It should not be too off. The hardware should pretty much behave like that, but it won't be exact. 
Okay, next question, sir. Can we go directly go to actual components instead of ideal components? Blocks of simulants. Yes, you can always go to direct uh, building your schematics if that is your question. But like how I said before, the idea of following a step by step process is to save, you know, prevent doing costly mistakes. Let's say you're not done the simulation. Let's say something doesn't work. See what happens in a in a schematic, right? See this is a schematic. This will not tell you whether all these things when you put together is it going to work or not. Some kind of simulation is required to say that okay, I, I put this chip, I put all these components, and there is a certain output. I give an input here, and this is the output, right? So if you have done that simulation at an architecture level, then you can expect that okay, this will work. Otherwise, if you if you just go to schematic, build your hardware, later you find that no, no, I didn't want to pick this IC. I wanted to you know pick something else. I didn't want these capacitors to be here, this inductor to be here. I wanted something else, right? Then your results may be different. That is why it's it's good to follow a step by step process. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking on the subscribe button below to get regular updates of video releases.